Good day everyone. Today, we will be discussing Unit 4, Human Flourishing. At the end of the unit, you should be able to, number one, define flourishing in philosopher, point of view, and modern world concept. Two, familiarize with the two Greek philosophers and their opinion on virtue. Three, appreciate the application of technology and its relation to human flourishing. And last, explain the connection of human flourishing to science and technology. So before, before we do proceed with our topic for this, for today, I want you to ask with these four questions. Number one, have you asked yourself if you are happy? Two, what is your own definition of happiness? And three, when is the last time you feel happy and how did you feel it? And four, what makes you happy? As we take a journey in this chapter, you will deeply understand the concept of happiness. So let's talk about first the human being. The understanding of STS will be further understood if we understand the nature of human being, his needs, and how to cater to these needs. The human being is an individual person that makes up the society and is responsible for the researches and innovations available today. According to Aristotle, man is defined as a rational animal. Why? Because he can think and use reason consistently. He is a creature whose, des whose destiny is to live in the spiritual world and physical world. He is made up of a material body and a spiritual soul, with the belief on the existence and to live in the kingdom of God. The human flourishing is defined as an effort to achieve self-actualization and fulfillment within the context of a large or larger community of individuals, each with the right to pursue his or her own such efforts. Aside from that, human flourishing encompasses the uniqueness, dignity, diversity, freedom, happiness, and holistic well-being of the individual within the larger family, community, and population. And achieving human flourishing is a lifelong existential journey of hopes, achievements, regrets, losses, illness, sufferings, and coping. If we do talk about human flourishing based on ancient Greek philosophers' perspective, Plato and Aristotle are the two of the most recognized Greek philosophers that tries to answer the question. And these great philosophers called flourishing life as eudaimonia and it is usually associated with happiness. For these two philosophers, happiness is the result of eudaimonia or human flourishing. So let's do talk about eudaimonia. A eudaimonia is strictly speaking the term, its term is a transliteration of the Greek word for prosperity, good fortune, wealth, or happiness. In philosophical context, the Greek word eudaimonia has traditionally been translated simply as happiness. The concept of eudaimonia comes from the Aristotle's Nicom Nicomachean Ethics, his philosophical work on the science happiness according to Irwin 2012. In the 14th, 4th century BC, Aristotle gave a series of lectures in Athens that became known as the Nicomachean Ethics. It is here that he introduced the word eudaimonia, which is now translated to mean human flourishing, wherein the innate potential of each individual to live a life of enduring happiness, penetrating wisdom, optimal well-being, and authentic love and compassion. Let's do talk about eudaimonia on the perspective of Socrates. Socrates, like Plato, believed that virtue was a form of knowledge, specifically a knowledge of good and evil. That is, he saw numerous virtues, and those numerous virtues are such justice, pity, courage as united. That is, all were one, and they were all knowledge. Socrates viewed this knowledge as required for us humans to achieve the ultimate good, which is or which was eudaimonia. And by us, Socrates meant the individual. So let's talk about Plato on eudaimonia. Monism. Plato believed that individuals naturally feel unhappiness when they do something they know and acknowledge to be wrong. 
eudaimonia, according to Plato, was the highest and ultimate aim of both moral thought and behavior or virtuous action. So the well-being of human individual must not depend on external goods. And those external goods that we know are fame, wealth, and good appearances. To live just for the sake of these external goods will not lead to flourishing. So if having a virtue is needed in order to flourish, or it is considered as one of the important thing to be considered in order for us to achieve flourishing, so how does can we develop or how does one develop virtue? According to Plato, human being can develop virtue by the following. Number one, examining things and thinking more. Plato believed that a human being who does not examine his or her life and surroundings will not flourish. He said that humans can reason and must use it to become wiser in order to flourish. Next one, by masterly using reason. Plato believed that a human is good if he or she uses his or her own reason over his desires. Limiting one's reason may result to negative consequences. Reasoning allows the control of one's self. If human is able to control one's self through reason and act for the common good, then he or she will flourish. By leaving the four cardinal virtues and those four cardinal virtues are wisdom courage temperance and justice plato believed that um for the virtues of wisdom one must pursue learning that is based on curiosity this would lead to more efficacy and more and self-mastery which are needed to have a fulfilling life courage is important in a just society because justice needs courageous individuals to stand for what is right and to correct what is wrong. Courage is also needed in order to face life's challenge. Temperance or self-restraint is important in society because it prevents corruption and chaos. A human without temperance or temperance will not flourish because lack of self-restraint or lack of self-control that can lead to biases and violences. So, what if, if we, do, we do talk about Plato about the concept of eudaimonia? Or if we could ask Aristotle himself, what is what happiness is? So, this is exactly what he would say. So, some identify happiness with virtue. Some with practical wisdom, others with a kind of philosophic wisdom, others with this, or one of this, accompanied by pleasure or not without pleasure, while others include all, also external prosperity. It is not probable that this would be entirely mistaken, but rather that they should be right in at least some one respect or even in most respects. Um, in this view, or in this excerpt, according to Aristotle, every living or human made thing, including its parts, has a unique characteristic, function, or activity that distinguishes it from all other things. So the highest good of a thing consists of the good appearance of its characteristic function, and the virtue or excellence of a thing consists of whatever traits or qualities enable it to perform that function well. It follows that eudaimonia consists of the good performance of the characteristic function of human beings, whatever that may be. And human virtue or also, um, all or excellence is that combination of traits or qualities that enables human to perform that function well. Aristotle believes that the characteristic function of human beings that which distinguishes them from all other things is their ability to reason. What are the aspects of human nature? There are four aspects of human nature according to Aristotle. Number one, physical. Two, emotional. Three, social. And last, rational. Human are physical beings. For humans to keep their body physically and mentally functioning, so we need um, basic needs such as air, water, food, 
rest and exercise. Humans are emotional beings. Humans are the highest forms of animals. Like any other animals, humans have needs, desires, and wants. Humans have emotional needs to express different emotions in such reaction. Humans are social beings. The feeling of satisfaction, flourishing, or well-being can be experienced when learning, is, when learning to socialize. As social beings, it is inherent that humans need friendship, companions, cooperation, and a sense of belongingness in society. Humans are rational beings. As Aristotle said, a human is defined as rational animals. Why? Because they can think and use reason consistently. Rationality is what differentiates humans from other animals. It allows humans to express, be creative, or obey reasons. How does human became or become more virtuous? At the beginning of Book 2 of the Nicomachean Ethics, Aristotle tells us that there are two different kinds of human excellences. Excellence number one, excellences of thought or intellectual virtue, and excellences of char character or virtual of virtue of character. Let's do talk about intellectual virtue or excellences of thought. Intellectual virtue. Well, for Aristotle, a virtue is a character, a character trait that enables a person to flourish. Just like Plato, Aristotle believes believed that humans, through reason, seek knowledge about the world. He also believed that by gaining knowledge, humans would flourish, and that he called it intellectual virtue. So intellectual virtue is an excellent personal trait or character strength that is deemed to be morally good for thinking and learning and is often associated with knowledge and cognitive ability. Aristotle made an important distinction between knowledge and human flourishing. There are two types of knowledge. Theoretical knowledge, wherein this type of knowledge is about the nature of the principle. It allows to manipulate the na it allows us to manipulate nature. However, without practical knowledge, it cannot be undone. So the practical knowledge, it is the knowledge of applying principle. Thus, knowledge is very important in life. But it is the application of this knowledge that leads to flourishing. Aristotle, aside from the intellectual virtue, the virtue in life is the virtue of knowledge. Wherein Aristotle defines virtuous character in Nicomachean ethics. Excellence of character then is a state concerned with choice, lying in a mean re relative to us. This being determined by reason and in the way in which the man of practical wisdom or pronimos would determine it. Now it is a mean between the vices, two vices, that that which depends on excess and that which depends on defect. By calling excellence of character a state, Aristotle means that it is neither a feeling nor a capacity nor a mere tendency to behave in specific ways. Rather, it is the settled condition we are in when we are well off in relation to feelings and actions. We are well off in relation to our feelings and actions when we are in a mean or intermediate state in regard to them. If, on the other hand, we have vicious character, we are badly off in relation to feelings and actions, and we fail to hit the mean in regard to them. So Aristotle believed that to flourish, one must possess the 11 virtuous traits, and those are courage, temperance, liber liberality, magnificence, magnanimity, patience, truthfulness, wittiness, friendliness, justice, and shame. So to sum up, or in summary, when we possess intellectual virtues and virtues of character, then we will attain new daimonia or human flourishing. So it should be 
for us to be able to achieve eudaimonia or human flourishing, it should be a combination of intellectual virtues and virtues of character. So that ends with the part one of the unit four. Thank you and God bless.